So I'm going to talk today about mission critical big data, and it's, it's incredible, isn't it? Um, this open source project that Doug and the team at Yahoo first created back in 2005, 2006, um, that in literally the blink of an eye, or so it seems, is now driving what Mike Olson described as a trillion dollar market. Incredible, unbelievable. Um, and of course, for that to really happen, Big enterprises, big companies need to adopt this in a very strategic way, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. So I think 2014 was actually what I would call the year of the proof of concept. It was, it's where companies are throwing up data lakes, clusters of servers, and so on, and maybe running it in parallel to existing storage, maybe using it for some slightly non-strategic applications. But I think we're on the cusp of them in 2015 to putting this in full production. You heard Mike talk about some of the very interesting use cases, everything from banking to healthcare and so on. And one of the questions I get asked quite a lot, actually, is why do some of these POCs, why are they not successful? What goes wrong? And I think the one characteristic that we're seeing at Wandisco in the market is this, if you remember that movie, Field of Dreams, where that guy has a voice in his head telling him to go out in his backyard and start building a baseball field and build it and they will come. And what I really mean here is when the IT department drives it without a business use case, um, they just throw up a data lake, put some data in it, and the business really isn't on that journey. They don't understand what it actually is. It's just a bit of technology. And, you know, frankly, they don't come. And in that scenario, the perception from the business is actually that it's a failure. The ones that are really successful, though, um, bring the business with them and answer some really important questions. Now, I couldn't quite believe this, but I mean, you just kind of assume that banks can add up, or I used to think banks could add up anyway. And one of the questions that they had was, are we making money, yes or no, in China? Is that Chinese operation making money? Now, a lot of the data in these systems, it turns out banks is structured, unstructured, so lots of PDF files and Word documents contain uh, customer information. In the past, they simply couldn't utilize that data. They couldn't use it. This, in this case, one of the largest banks in the world discovered that they actually, as part of a POC that we worked on with them, discovered that they actually weren't making money in their Chinese operation. Unbelievable. Others, you know, we speaking recently to one of the largest insurance companies in the world in New York, did, a, did some analysis of the top three actuarial risk factors. And guess what? They were all wrong. Their top three assumptions of risk, demographic risk, were all wrong. And they only discovered it because they implemented Hadoop. And there are some more obvious ones. You know, can we, you know, can we do better at stopping credit card fraud? You know, why is it if I bought an airline ticket to Barcelona and checked into a hotel that my that somebody would wonder if it was really me using my credit card down the street. Of course, of course it's me. Should, that, this stuff should be obvious. And finally, um, one, one of the questions that we saw, which I found hilarious, was uh, wealth management division of the bank. Their use case was wishing one of their customers a happy birthday, because apparently the customer retention on that is huge. So these are big business, big business questions. Some of them seem obvious, but they're not. And actually, dragging the business with you on that journey is absolutely critical. And I think we're now at the point where I would say that the rubber really has to meet the road. Because if Hadoop is, in fact, to be used in mission-critical applications, we have, to do a couple of we have to do two or three things, right? We have to have the operational tooling. Those guys that stare at screens all day have to be able to manage a large cluster of servers in the same way that they do with Exadata and so on today. Security has to be equivalent to the existing systems that are in the market today. And it has to be super reliable. You know, if a bank's trading system goes down, the lost, the lost transactions would be $100 million a minute. Now, at Wandisco, we're very focused on the, on the last one there. We replicate entire Hadoop uh, data centers for complete reliability. And I know that the market is building resilient systems um, throughout. So I think the future is going to be really exciting. And as Mike said, you know, if this really is a trillion-dollar market, this will be the most disruptive technology that we have ever seen in our lifetimes. Thank you so much.